Hi everyone. Uh, so welcome to this uh, lecture two of week nine on the on, on the course of uh, linear systems theory. Uh, so just the the previous lecture we had seen uh, explicitly uh, how to deal with systems which could be both uncontrollable and unobservable at the same time, and how how could we actually get uh, split uh, each of those parts into the completely complete controllable plus observable mode till the modes which are neither controllable nor observable and so on. We also uh, had a nice exposition to what it meant by minimal realization of the system that the system is uh, or a certain realization is minimal if and only if it is uh, both uh, controllable and observable and we also saw a few examples uh, related to that. So what we will uh, focus on uh, in, in this lecture is to, uh, to look at uh, problems more from a, from a design uh, perspective, right. So, we spend a lot of time uh, building up tools starting from linear algebra till analysis starting from uh, solutions to the state space equations, uh, deriving conditions for stability, checking for controllability, uh, observability and so on, right. So, there is a bunch of uh, results we had for the analysis phase. And of course, we also towards the uh, end had some, some results on, on, on stabilizability and what does it mean by existence of a stabilizing feedback and, and so on. So, we will today uh, start with some basic exposition to solving basic uh, design problems. Uh, how are these related to the design methods which we did by root locus? or even via the Bode plot essentially to design lead lag compensators which were in, in, uh, in a way some kind of an approximation of, uh, of, of, of PID controllers, right. So, there is a nice relationship between a, a, a PID controller and a lead lag compensator and so on. Uh, if we uh, remember correctly, so much of the analysis there was based on the dominant pool. So, everything we said okay, uh, if I were to choose uh, a controller for a certain overshoot, a settling time, uh, possibly also for a certain uh, steady state uh, response with respect to the errors and so on. So, we focused a lot of it based on, on the dominant poles and then we say oh, the other poles are fairly to the left. So, their, their dominance is minimal and there are also uh, nice results on, on, on on how to ensure dominance and, and, and so on, which were uh, of course a little approximation of the exact problem that we were supposed to, to, uh, uh, to handle. Now, we did not really explicitly look at can I uh, uh, not only look at the dominant poles, but can I also look at placing all the other poles at the exact locations. We actually did not encounter problems like that. We were happy just by looking at the uh, dominant pole analysis and where the response of the uh, of the dominant poles was fairly uh, close to the actual system right uh, now uh, can we have a little finer control of, of of the system or can i place all of the poles together i'll tell you what the pole pl placement means in terms of eigen values uh, via some some state feedback what if i want to handle problems where i may just want to do uh, place few of the poles, not, not say I have 10 poles, I may just want to place 2 or 3, right. So, this, this is also referred to as, as partial pole placement. So, I can have a little uh, more finer control of my, uh, of, of my uh, closed loop poles or I can do a fine, finer control of my, uh, of my design procedure, right. So, I can have a finer control of the system and can de design appropriate techniques for to achieve uh, a complete uh, pole placement. Right? So, we will slowly build up on those those uh, those results and see what are the methods of, of doing this. Okay, so, uh, I will quickly uh, go through the state space uh, canonical forms and much of the results we will derive uh, based on this uh, these canonical forms. Okay, so, uh, the, the general uh, canonical forms uh, would be okay again i'm interested in uh, uh, systems of uh, state space realizations with a b c and d matrices uh, and some of these realizations will have a standard uh, structure and interpretation in terms of uh, controllability and observability and also the controller design and so on with the observer design which will come up in in the in, in module number 10 
so we have uh, standard forms of the controllable form, the observable form, the diagonal form and, and the uh, Jordan form. Okay. So, we are do most of our analysis based on, on single input, single output system that is where we could actually write down expressions neatly and understand for, for ourselves. I will just put up some notes related to, to, to MIMO uh, on, 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 the, on the course platform uh, and we could discuss that uh, whenever uh, I mean there are some, some difficulties in that. Okay. So, uh, I start with, uh, with a transfer function of, of maybe order n and given these coefficients b naught till b n minus 1, a 1 or till b n, a a 1 till a n. Okay. So, I have something, something like this. So, uh, the controllable canonical form would uh, just be like this, it is that x 1 dot is x 2, x 2 dot is x 3 and so on and x n dot will have all the uh, coefficients of the denominator terms over here and the input will just appear in the last entry of uh, the B matrix. Uh, okay, it is named uh, this way uh, because if I can write a system in this form, it is always fully uh, controllable and, and I know that given a system in one form, I can always write it into to, to to some other forms via some canonical uh, transformation. Uh, so, I will I will uh, also introduce what kind of transformations we need to write a system into its, uh, its, its controllable canonical form. And I will see also its direct implication on, on, on pool placement techniques or the design techniques. Uh, okay, so, much of this uh, how to derive that uh, you can refer to my earlier lectures. Okay, the, the reference is missing, I will put, put this up in the slides when I, when I upload them on the portal. Similarly, we will have uh, something also called as an uh, observer canonical form uh, and whenever I can add the system this way, it is it is uh, fully fully observable. I will not go into the details of this, but uh, okay, again you could uh, refer to our early earlier lectures where things were really, really derived uh, starting, starting from scratch. So, I will avoid repetition of those uh, discussions again. Okay, so, uh, an and interesting aspect is the uh, diagonal form, right, where I can just split the A matrix into, uh, into the diagonal entries which are the eigenvalues of uh, the A, A, A matrix and well, what I interesting uh, to note is that uh, if I write a system in the diagonal form, it is easier to check controllability because assume I have all non-zero eigenvalues on the diagonal, then the system is controllable if and only if each entry of the U matrix has, a, has an entry 1 right? or, or a non-zero entry so to speak. Right. So, uh, now uh, again when, the, when can I do this? Well, this can be written uh, only when the denominator polynomial of the transfer function has, has distinct roots. Uh, well, if it has repeated roots then we can look at the, at the Jordan form. We know also the answer to what to do with, with repeated roots. Okay. So, again uh, we know how to actually given a system how to transfer it into or transform it into a diagonal form or a Jordan form. We did, uh, we did spend a lot of time uh, analyzing the diagonal, diagonal form and also even the, uh, the Jordan form. Okay. So, uh, we will skip again that, uh, that discussion. Okay. Now, given any, any system of the form x dot is a x plus uh, b u, how do I write it in the uh, controllable canonical form? Okay. So, uh, given any arbitrary state space realization, we can transform it into either a controllable or an absorbable canonical form using similarity transformation. Right? So, uh, similarity transformation where you know in, in your new coordinates you will have x uh, is p inverse a p plus uh, I think some p inverse b times u, uh, we have x bar here and so on. So, does there, so the question to ask ourselves is does there exist a similarity transformation which will take my state space system from a general form to a controllable canonical form and if the answer is yes, what is that form that takes us to that thing. So, I will just read out the steps, uh, again we will not, not spend much time on the proofs of this, uh, but we will spend time on doing, on, on analyzing the, the, for the controllable canonical form by itself. Okay, so let me compute a, a matrix which has entries in the following form. Right? So, where all these a 1 till a n they come from here. Okay? Now, once I have, uh, so these are the, these a's are just the coefficients of the uh, characteristic uh, polynomial. Okay? Now, once I uh, have, uh, have this uh, matrix w, 
Uh, I can always compute the uh, controllable matrix, uh, the, the controllability matrix B till A n minus 1 B and I define now a transformation P which looks as uh, this C multiplied with uh, this uh, W over here. Okay. Now, uh, so once I do this I just plug in uh, into, uh, into my original system and I compute what is P inverse A P, I find that this a bar, B bar, C bar, D bar are also always in the uh, controllable canonical form. Okay. Similarly, uh, I can use the same matrix W with the uh, observability matrix to get the equivalent transformation to write my system in the uh, observable canonical form. Okay. Uh, as, a, as a little exercise, you can just try uh, solving, solving this. I will Okay, I will not spend time doing this, it is it's, it's a, it's a kind of a trivial uh, exercise. So, transform this into the controllable form and the observable form. I just do some computations here to find what are these coefficients of S i minus A or the determinant of S i minus A and also the controllability matrix. Uh, so, uh, a little guess that you could do now is that I can do this uh, if and possibly uh, a necessary condition is that the system must be completely controllable right and if it if it is not then maybe i might uh, this p may not be full rank and so on we slowly build up on this on these results and really derive uh, towards the end uh, necessary and sufficient conditions for which i can write a system into controllable canonical form and therefore design a controller for the system uh, so we uh, in our previous lectures spend a lot of time on uh, systems of this form x dot equal to a x plus b u. Uh, what does it mean by designing a stabilizing controller and what are the conditions on a, b and so on such that the closed loop system is, is uh, or, or that the system is actually uh, stabilizable. Okay. So, here we again we uh, take our uh, motivation from this uh, expression which is called the state feedback controller. Again the assumption is that I can actually uh, that the assumption here is that I can I actually know what the states are. If I do not know the states, that uh, uh, that discussion will be in 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 module number ten. But for for now, I can assume. Uh, let me assume safely that I know uh, what the states are. Okay. So uh, I start with uh, a system of this form, together with a control. My feed my closed loop system with this feedback control law looks uh, something like this. Okay. Now. Uh, what does this mean that the poles of the closed loop system are the eigenvalues of a minus b k and by choosing k right so so the the, the eigenvalues of the closed loop system depend on of course a is given to me in, in the open loop b is also the the input matrix i can't do much with this but i can always change the eigenvalues based on the uh, values of k okay so that is the, the problem which we will solve so uh, can i choose k appropriately in such a way that I can res I can achieve the desired performance uh, that could just be starting from an open loop unstable system to a stable closed loop system. The specifications could also be in terms of the transient response of the system, it could also be in terms of the uh, steady state values uh, of the system and so on. Okay, so, this uh, technique is called the uh, pole placement technique. Right, so, which, which essentially means we are placing the poles or the eigenvalues of the closed loop system at some desired locations or some predefined locations. Okay. So, the control design problem is of placing the closed loop system at desired locations by choosing an appropriate feedback gain matrix k right? and, then, and then just applying this control law u equal to minus k x. Okay, so, we will uh, prove this a little later that a necessary and sufficient condition for arbitrary pole placement is that uh, A is fully controllable. So, before even proving this, we will first understand what does it mean by uh, fluid, uh, what does it mean of the system being fully uh, controllable and then what does it mean um, after that to actually assign the closed loop poles. Okay, now, again as I said earlier, we assume that uh, we know all the states. Okay. So, if I have a problem in such a way that let us say that I have a system x dot is A x plus B u and I say that a, a problem would state that 
place all the closed loop poles at these locations mu 1 till mu n mu n okay in that case well i am just looking at uh, well so this is how my closed loop uh, system poles will look like and it will have a corresponding uh, characteristic uh, equation okay now this is given to me right place the poles at this desired location and therefore with this poles i can write the closed loop characteristic equation of, of, on this form and i can expand it to a polynomials polynomial in s with this way, this num coefficients alpha 1 till alpha n known to me right they come from uh, from from here till here okay now given the desired values of mu 1 till mu n through which i can also compute these alphas so the objective is to find a feedback gain gain uh, matrix k such that the closed loop system satisfies this characteristic equation right so that will be the the design problem here uh, again the assumption here is that the system is fully controllable whatever the system is not fully controllable so we will uh, come back to that a little later but i think the you could actually uh, guess what is coming up over there that can i actually place the uh, poles of the controllable part at desired locations assuming that the uncontrollable part is uh, is a stability matrix so that's what we did in uh, in, in lectures of, of week 7 right so so slowly we will uh, come up with procedure of how to find this uh, uh, this matrix uh, this gain matrix k right given the location of the closed loop poles given my a matrix and given the b matrix which kind of determines how my system enters uh, into or, or how my input enters into the system right so uh, so just to summarize we have looked at state space canonical forms and how to even formulate the feedback control problem and in the next lecture i will explicitly tell you methods of uh, designing these controllers uh, based on at least there are three three methods and also we'll derive the uh, the famous ackermans uh, formula thanks for listening